This is Chef Kaz, returning once again. Don't worry, everything in the future is as good as it could possibly be, where I just came back from. You might recognize me from such shows as The Taste or Ex-Wives of Rock. Many people know me for creating awesomeness in their lives, and they like me for this fact, and I am appreciative. Today, we're going to be making a new awesome recipe. Great breakfast option, something that's easy to prepare. You can prepare it in large amounts, so you can prepare some and then have it for the rest of your week or for days ahead in the land of yore in the future. And it's going to be really easy and it's also kind of sexy. It's fun, it's good to look at, and good to taste. You know, the best way to do things good to look at and good to taste. We're going to be making buckwheat porridge with a raspberry compote and toasted walnuts. That's right. I know it sounds sexy. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need some buckwheat, whole grain, creamy buckwheat cereal. And I really like buckwheat because it's super easy to digest. It's just something different. I love steel cut oats, but maybe you or I make them a little bit too often. You want something a little bit different. And again, something that you can produce in bulk, in quantities. And I'm going to read some nutritional facts. This has per quarter cup dry, of course. It has five grams of protein, but I'm also really interested in the fact that it has uh, two grams of fiber and 30 grams of total carbohydrate um, just per quarter cup. And it's just really like a nice, clean food. It makes me feel good when I eat it. So in terms of quantity that you want to put in, it's really going to be up to you. If you want to make just for one day, you can do that. But why not make for five days or make for a whole month? You don't have to have it every day, but you could make, you know, let's say 10 portions, freeze it, and then have it available to you for the rest of the month. So I'm making this for myself and a few friends. So I'm going to put in about one or two cups. I could measure it out, but that would be way too scientific. And sometimes I like to be scientific, but sometimes I don't. And you're going to go with a three to one liquid to buckwheat ratio. And you can use milk, you can use coconut milk, you can use almond milk. For today, I'm just using water. There's really no, nothing bad about using water. And the other thing is you can always add in more liquid or you can cook off the additional liquid. So don't worry about making it too wet. It's just going to take more time to cook. So next, we're going to be making our raspberry compote. And for that, you can, again, start off with as many raspberries as you want. The quantity you start with isn't as important as the final product. What you want to do is just have, think about how long you can keep it for and what you're going to use it for. So I'm going to put my strawberry, my raspberries into another short little saucepan and you want to cover them with water. And again, the amount of water here really isn't going to be too critical because we can cook this down and we're going to. It's going to help break down the raspberries, help release some of the flavor but you can also add more water in should you need to. So we've got our buckwheat with our water on high heat and same with our raspberries and we're just going to bring these two up to a boil. Stir them regularly, stir them consistently and really at this point it's an easy process. What we want to do is just develop a nice texture with our, with our buckwheat here and all that's going to take is time and a little bit of heat. We're going to reduce the heat out. I'd like to have it at just a simmer rather than an all-out boil. And that's going to cook pretty quickly. The raspberries, we want to cook out all of that liquid. And you want to start to break them down a little bit with your spatula. Just kind of break them up. And they'll take a little bit longer. So if you need to reduce the heat on your buckwheat, do so. So that you time everything to come out together. So you can see that the raspberry compote is quickly reducing. You're just going to have to basically wait it out. Give it occasional stirs. Make sure it's scraped off the sides. Don't add anything additional to it just yet. We're going to add some, uh, some honey to sweeten it up. But if you do that too early on, you could burn the honey on the side of the pan. So basically just keep boiling this down until you are at the desired consistency. So to add a little bit of a creamy texture to our porridge, I'm just going to add some coconut milk. And again, the amount you put in here is just up to your desired consistency. But I'm going to put in about a half a cup. 
stir that back in thoroughly. And if you if you add in the the coconut milk after all the water has basically been absorbed, it'll really create that creamy consistency. And the reason I'm using coconut milk uh, rather than you know an almond milk, for example, almond milk is going to be really watery. It's not going to really add any creaminess to it. On the other hand, if you want to add you know just two percent or or skim milk or or even cream or half and half. You know, I personally am just not a big fan of using a lot of milk products, dairy products. If you like them, they don't, you know, affect you in any way that depletes your life performance, you know, go for it. There's nothing that is going to be objectively good or objectively bad. It's just that if you like how it affects you, then go for it. If you don't love how it affects you, milk, be, that being milk, you know, try out coconut milk. I really like that it's got a little bit more thickness than the soy milks and the almond milks. And it also, you know, gives a little bit of that coconutty flavor without being overwhelming. And that's a nice complex note that's going to pair well with our raspberry compote in addition to our toasted walnuts. So when you've got almost all the liquid cooked out from your raspberry compote, at this point, you're going to put in a sweetener of your choice. We're going to, I'm going to add honey. I just like that it's easy to use, that I can pour it right out of a bottle. I love raw honey. We're not using raw honey today but I do love raw honey. Agave, brown sugar, uh, sugar in the raw, all great options. Really, you'll hear kind of some controversy around sweeteners, but if it's not um, you know, a, a zero calorie sweetener, pretty much all of these sugars are gonna be affected, affect your body in the same way. You could also use the coconut sugar that we used in the chocolate awesomeness engaging smoothie recipe, um, which is considered not a high glycemic sugar. It's either a medium or a low glycemic. So, just going to finish this off, turn the heat up as needed. Get your raspberry compote all the way down to basically just being a little bit of those raspberries. Stirring around, releasing the heat. So you've got your raspberry compote, basically all the liquid cooked out. You want to reduce the heat just a little bit more because at this stage, if the heat is too high, you will, be, you will burn the sugars and it will not taste very good. Another thing I love about making the raspberry compote is you get all those raspberry seeds in there, which are, raspberries are actually the highest fiber food that there is per, you know, per volume or per consistency. Um, so you get all those great raspberry seeds, which are just great for flushing everything out of your gut. So turn the heat down, and even at the end, there's going to be a little bit of steam that comes off. So you're just going to let that finish off. Keep stirring it around regularly, get all that moisture out. And at this point, kill your heat. So when you've got everything prepared, your buckwheat is all set at your desired consistency. This is how I like to, to plate this dish. I'm just going to put some of my buckwheat porridge into my bowl. That's where it goes. It does not go in another area of your house. It goes into your bowls or someplace other that you might be eating from. All right, that's just going to be good because no more wants to come off of that spoon. And I'm put that down. And next I'm going to sprinkle some of my walnuts my toasted walnuts. And all I did with these was lightly toast them in a pan and add some sugar and finish the, the sugar around the walnuts. And then finally, you are just gonna take some of your raspberry compote, pour that over top to your desired quantity. So when you've got everything plated and we're in your bowl, you've got a really nice, some coloration. I really like how that you've got that raspberry liquid kind of surrounding it like a lava moat. And what you can do here to different effects is take just a, a, a knife, like a butter knife or a table knife, and you can kind of stir it around. And you might like it just on top, but this way you can kind of create some sort of a, some more of a texturization. You may have liked it just how it was better, or you may want to do something like that. You could also put a little bit more raspberry co compote on the top, but just to kind of, I was going for a swirl effect, didn't exactly work out, but regardless. So let's give give it a little taste here. Mmm. That's sexiness in my mouth right now. Oh. Oh yeah. That'll work. So this has been Chef Kaz 
bring you awesomeness through a time portal from the future, smashing you in the face with it. It just happened in your life right now. Big ups, lvinformer.com, chefcast.com, Castronauts. We love you guys. We couldn't do it without you. We're on the mission together. Awesomeness out.